Andrew White gaf een succesvolle carrière in de geneeskunde op en werd voorganger in een van de gevaarlijkste steden ter wereld, Baghdad in Irak. Andrew heeft inmiddels meer dan 1300 gemeenteleden verloren aan bomaanslagen. Hij is zelf met de dood bedreigd en leidt aan de ziekte MS. Ondanks dat blijft hij volharden in zijn missie. Vrede stichten in Baghdad. Hierover spreekt hij vandaag. How many Iraqis are here? Any Iraqis? Iraqi Masihi? Shimit Baba, Brona, Brocha, Kosha, Ha'alaha, Amin. I always start whatever I'm saying by praying God's blessing in Aramaic. Jesus did it, so I do it. Good enough for him, good enough for me. It's a great joy to be here in the Netherlands. There's something very special about this land and this people. And as you look historically at what has happened here, you can see how God has been involved in this place for a very long time. And one of the key things was the way that the people of the Netherlands treated the Jewish community. I know the Jewish community suffered terribly here in the Holocaust. But one of the amazing things is that the Jewish community here is not Ashkenazi, as in European. The Jewish community of the Netherlands is Sephardi. Did you know that? Come on, wake up! <laughs> it is Sephardi because when the Jews of Spain and Portugal were persecuted and removed from their land, the only place that would take them was the Netherlands. And so the Jews of this land are from North Africa, Spain, and Portugal. I had the strange honor of being basically the rabbi in Baghdad. There was no rabbi. There were six Jews left. Iraq at one stage had the biggest Jewish community in the Middle East, and that is down to six. But the Jews had been persecuted like the Christians are persecuted now. So many of the Christians were in Baghdad. I, had, I started off my life not in Iraq. I mean my professional life after I finished doing medicine. I did theology. And then I did a doctorate. My second doctorate was on the role of Israel in Christian theology. And my third doctorate was on the role of the Baal Shem Tov in the Haskalah. It's Yiddish. I don't expect you to understand Yiddish. <laughs> and then, they're my three real doctorates. I've got another 18 pretend ones. You know those you don't do any work for? We just turn up and they dress you in funny clothes and give you a doctorate. They're not real ones. But I give thanks for serving in the most difficult, dangerous place in the world. If you don't believe me, I have a $157 million price tag on my head set by ISIS. I invited them to dinner one night because if you ever need to deal with your enemies, you need to be nice to them. I said, come around for dinner. They said, yes, we'll come for dinner, but we'll chop your head off afterwards. 
I didn't take the invitation any further. So, so many of our Christians in Baghdad, they originate from the town of Nineveh. Nineveh. You remember there was a miserable evangelist called Jonah. He came to Iraq in a submarine. (laughs) And he came to Nineveh. And until ISIS came to Nineveh recently, everybody there, not everybody, most people were Christian in the midst of an Islamic nation. There was a Christian people because of the miserable evangelist in a submarine. And so we've got to realize that even when somebody can be a miserable, boring religious leader, if he says the word of God, it will continue for generations to come. The word of Jonah may have done little at the time, but now it did everything. So I was made to leave Iraq. There's a man called the Archbishop of Canterbury. He used to be my assistant and suddenly he became my boss. So you have to do what he says. So he said, Andrew, they're after you. Get out quickly. I said, I said to my people, I will never leave you. I am not going to leave my people. He said, I'll give you two days. I went. But I went to Jordan. And in Jordan, there were all my people. They were fleeing out of Iraq and fleeing with me. And I'll never forget one little boy called Mario. Mario's father was killed by ISIS, Dash. And I gave them food and housing and clothes. And I said to Mario one day, is there anything else you want? And he put his arms out. And he said, Abuna, will you be my daddy? I said, of course, I'll be your daddy. And then he said to me, I want one other thing. I want school. No Iraqi refugees were allowed school. And so in three weeks, I started a school. And now we have several hundred children in the school. They're all beautifully dressed. All the children wear bow ties. Why? Because Abuna wears a bow tie. So their uniform is bow ties. I go into the school regularly and I took all the children an olive wood cross from Bethlehem. And I gave them all each a cross. And one boy, Yosef, started to cry. I said, why are you crying, Yosef? He said, I wanted a cross for my daddy, but Dash killed him. Now, I was supposed to see the time here. It's gone. Am I out of time? There's no time there. Oh, well. I presume I've got to shut up. So I gave him the cross and I said, we will leave this one here for your daddy. And when I go back to the class each day, I ask them, 
What should I say to the people in the Netherlands or in America or in England that I'm going to see? And when I went in last time, Joseph gave me his cross. And he said, will you take my cross and give it to them and tell them we love them? So here is his cross, and I'm giving it to you. You. <laughs> you. Here's Joseph's cross. I presume, seeing as the time has run out there, I've got to shut up and go. I've got lots of books about what has happened. Please do come and buy them and see something of the glory that God is doing in the persecuted church. And the amazing thing is we were Orthodox, Anglican, Syriani. When all the persecution came, we just became Messihi. We are just Christians. We are followers of the Messiah. You do that as well. Bye.